want me to put that on my todger? Harry's wife, she is in crisis. Hello, I'm H.G. Tudor. I've explained in Immediate Parts Passim the fact that the end is nigh and listed a number of factors as to why that's the case. If you've not watched that video, then go and do so now, you naughty, naughty viewers. Alongside that the end is nigh, Harry's wife finds herself in a situation of crisis. In part, as a consequence of the things that I listed in the end is nigh video, but also as a consequence of the fact that she can't manage her PR effectively. As you know, I have access to a top PR individual that feeds me interesting information about various individuals, but also gives me the inside track as to the way that PR is managed. And based upon this individual's expertise, I'm able to convey to you that Harry's a combination of Harry's wife's narcissism and her ineptitude with her personal uh, relations is resulting in her being placed in a situation of crisis. As you know, there is the French investigation which focused on the fact that Archwell doesn't physically exist. The journalist visited the official address in Beverly Hills and the foundation was registered at an empty law office. See parts passim for my greater explanation as to the dodginess associated with all of that. They learned that 90% of the money is dormant. They learned that when Harry and Harry's wife managed the Queen's Charity Foundation, they spent virtually all the donations on operational costs. Harry's wife doesn't realise that what she's done is create what's known as an avoidable crisis. Her narcissism doesn't let her see that because it is so focused on looking at what's directly in front of her, it doesn't pay attention to what's happening in the future. That's not its style. And therefore, whilst it's entirely apt at controlling people in the now, drawing fuel in the now, accessing character traits and residual benefits in the now, it then, as I've explained to you on multiple occasions, creates those collateral consequences. And one of those is that she creates PR crises for herself. Harry's wife, because she's not that bright, and because she's governed by the short-term nature of her narcissism, fails to understand that PR isn't just about publishing press releases, about punting her recipe in someone else's cookbook, or posing on the red carpet during Dancing for Dyslexia gala awards, or turning up at the graves of slaughtered kids in Uvalde. PR is not simply about proactive media relations. That's actually just a very small part of the concept. PR, used effectively, includes a methodical, strategic approach to reputation management. And in actual fact, it's quite clear that Harry's wife doesn't actually have any overarching PR strategy because we see the random, all-over-the-place puff pieces. She doesn't, for instance, listen to professional advice. Look at how high the PR people turnover has been in-house. Those poorly managed relationships, the basically, you're not doing what I want, you're out. The disengaging nature with non-intimate secondary sources that a narcissist engages in. She also picks up and throws away PR agencies before there's any chance to create a meaningful working relationship. It's a little bit like appointing a football manager and they get no chance to get to know the players and you sack them after three games because they're losing. The only thing that she does is spend money at the shiny publicity, the look at me, the puff pieces, and, of course, ridiculously overpaying Obama's and Clinton's PR advisors. Just recently, the Mail Online reported that Harry and Harry's wife's Archwell paid Michelle Obama's former press secretary $110,000 and one of Hillary Clinton's former advisors $215,000 in 2021. The payments were described as being for the pair providing strategic support to Archwell. 
tax records show that $110,000 was given to KMLSA LLC, a California-based PR firm run by Katie McCormick Leyvelt, who served as Michelle Obama's press secretary between 2007 and 2011. The second payment of $215,000 was given to Invisible Hand LLC, a social impact agency run by Genevieve Roth. Roth previously served as an advisor to Hillary Clinton's 2016 presidential campaign. Invisible Hand still lists Archwell as among its partners online. It's also worked with the Obama Foundation. This, of course, is character trait acquisition on the part of Harry's wife. By signing up to these particular agencies, she's hoping to utilise, of course, the impact of the fame and status of Clinton and Obama, but failing miserably. She also overpays for it. She's hired them because of the connection to star politicians that she wants to emulate, but not because their field of communication expertise is relevant at all to her goals. She doesn't understand public relations. Invariably, what happens when a narcissist engages with their PR agency is that it doesn't last long. Either the agency drops them, or the narcissist more commonly will drop the agency because it's not doing what they want, despite the fact that they will be doing, but they're not seeing the impossible results. Invariably, they want to achieve A by doing B, and then, of course, they do B and achieve C. And then if you want to achieve A, you need D. The narcissist acts with stupidity and incompetence and basically turns around and projects that stupidity and competence onto the relevant PR agency, saying, you don't know what you're doing, I'm going to go and find another PR agency that will do as I say. Always, of course, a certain control in the now, never investing in a continuous flow of PR work to ensure stable reputation management and crisis prevention. So she keeps creating crises for herself. The latest report by the French is just one example of a preventable PR crisis that her royal stupidity managed to create. Basically, there are three types of crises, victim cluster, accidental cluster, and preventable cluster. And what she falls into is organisational misdeed with no injuries, which is a subcategory of the preventable cluster. It doesn't make any difference whether or not the findings of the report become a huge scandal, She'll probably deal with it by asserting control through withdrawal if the response is moderate, or she might sue somebody for defamation, direct assertion of control, if it grows bigger. What actually matters is crisis communications ABC. Crises are perceptual, and if an organisation's stakeholders believe it is in crisis, the organisation is in a crisis unless it can prove otherwise to the stakeholders. So, for instance, with this French investigation, we ask, who are Archwell stakeholders? Well, generally, a stakeholder is someone who has an interest, a stake, in the organisation, which might be direct or indirect interest, as well as active or passive, known or unknown, recognised or unknown. In the case of Archwell, the stakeholders are government, media, interest groups, employees, competitors, regulators, lawyers, partners, financial institutions, benefactors, beneficiaries and the general public. Stakeholders don't only have a stake in the organisational behaviour, but they're linked to one another. It's enough that the media regards what came to light about Archwell as a crisis, but most likely there's going to be other groups of stakeholders who share this view. But Harry's wife doesn't. She basically looks at it, it's all legal, it's all been set up, it's all right and proper. But setting up a royal global foundation as a shadow is similar to a Russian fraudster setting up a legal on-paper bank in Cyprus or Dubai. Nothing against the law, but it looks rotten reputation-wise. Having $9 million just sitting there in the bank of a charitable foundation in times of unprecedented global economic hardship might raise eyebrows, but hey, it's not legal, so I'll just ignore it. Receiving $10 million from one anonymous donor, Netflix fee, and $3 million from another known anonymous donor, Harry or Spotify, might be questionable, but who are you to question me, the Duchess of Overseas, Empress of Woke? You see, 
She's incapable of understanding the necessity of protecting Archwell's long-term reputation. And therefore, she keeps creating these crises rather than managing them or getting somebody competent to do so. And therefore, her pursuit of the prime aims because of her middle-mid-range narcissism means that she creates what are actually avoidable crises that are going to ultimately drag her down. I'm H.G. Tudor. Thank you for listening.